If you're just tuning in, we're watching videos on ground squirrels. I don't want to see that. Thank you, please. That's going to show up my nightmares tonight. I thought they were like, I thought they were like nice, innocent animals that are just annoying. I didn't realize they were like vicious, snake-eating. It's Groundhogzilla! Uh, welcome back. Um, uh, so, okay. Now, I'm really hitting a lot of these concepts heavy uh, today and even last class. Uh, it is hard to sit through a lecture for two and a half hours. So I apologize for this. Uh, but we're leading into something, and I will uh, give you some time to work next class on the quiz, um, which will not be easy. But uh, I did post on Canvas, uh, finally, the instructions on Raspberry Pi purchasing. Uh, I also posted the links to the ones that I found, a two gigabyte model for $62.99. It does require a micro SD card and a T cobbler kit. Uh, I also posted a, a link to a one gigabyte model uh, for $69.99. Uh, that included an SD card, which if you ask me, the two gigabyte model was, it's a much better deal, but some people don't like the case you can order whatever case you want. Um, but if you want some examples of kits you can buy, I did post those. Uh, I would like if you could have them by next week. I'm gonna show you how to flash them. We're gonna talk programming next week. We're gonna talk soldering. We're gonna talk uh, about a lot of, of very physical things related to wiring that has absolutely friggin' lutely nothing to do with math. So, um, and even the programming, the programming isn't math yet. The programming that we're going to be doing next week is making lights blink, uh, which is not math. It's just programming. Uh, for most of you, um, every year in this class, people come into my class and they're like, I don't know how to do Python. Well, I don't either, but we make it, we make it work. Um, the thing about Python coding is, if you know how to look up examples of how to do Python coding, you know how to do coding. That's it. <laughs> uh, if you can modify the code to make it do whatever you want, I don't care if the code already exists. That's the point that, that exists. Uh, if the code exists, it's free for you to use, it's already been developed, you just take what already exists. Uh, I'm sure you've been through enough coding classes. That's, right? Yes? Have you been through coding classes? Okay. I know you have. I know some of these guys have, but uh, it's, that's, that's the goal there. But we'll talk about that next week. Um, what we're working towards is on Thursday, we're going to be talking about Tevinen and Norton equivalent circuits. Uh, that is going to round out our discussion on resistance only circuits. Next week, we're gonna start talking about Raspberry Pi stuff. You will have a week off from all this heavy content, hopefully to, to let it settle, or let it really sit in your brain. I'm gonna give you two weeks worth of quizzes on materials we've learned about resistance only circuits, okay? Quiz for this week will not be on Norton and uh, Tevinen equivalent circuits. It will be on doing the kind of stuff that we just did. Um, you will be able to work on the quizzes together. My quizzes are posted on Canvas with the full understanding that if I sit there and tell you, hey, take this quiz, unless I am watching you take the quiz in class, you're gonna go home and some people are gonna work with other people, okay? If you work with somebody else, I'm just gonna go ahead and preempt that and say, go ahead and work with other people. It's not fair for you. If, you. if you can understand the concepts working by yourself and you feel that's better, do it. Go for it. You can check your answers with other people, that's fine. Okay? But if you're, if you're going to work by yourself and other people are gonna to work together and they're gonna to get better grades than you on the quiz, 
and you're going to feel bad. That makes me feel bad because what you did the right thing by working by yourself on a quiz. No, these are group quizzes. I don't care if you share answers. Uh, if you share answers though, when you go to take the test and you haven't learned the material, um, it's going to make everything harder. So that's, that's kind of uh, my point here. Do the quizzes together, fine. I don't care, but do your abso friggin' lutely best to learn the material, because it will come back on the tests, and you will need to know it. You work on it together on the quizzes, it might help you learn stuff. You work on it alone on the quizzes, it helps you learn better, go for it. I was always a loner, because mostly because other people just wanted to copy down my answers, but whatever. Um, all right, so before we get into that, uh, I promised you at some point we were going to talk about DC current sources. So we will. I'm just going to draw a very simple circuit. Okay. Four resistors. This is R1, R2, R3, R4. This is a current source, IS, and it is going to be generating 0 0.2 amps of current. Okay? Um, now, in this circuit, we do not know what the source voltage is. If we go ahead and start drawing nodes, this is node 1, all this up here is node 2, and all this down here is node three. Okay, we can ground node three. If we were to write out our table of nodes and voltages, which sometimes helps, when you have this few of nodes, it's a little different, but one, two, three. We know that three is at zero. We know nothing else. Unlike the last one with a DC voltage source, we could say, oh, there's X number of volts that go jump across there. We don't know. The voltage across that power source is dependent on what it sees from the circuit. Okay? So, we don't know what any of the rest of the node voltages are. Sadly. Oh well. We, huh? Give up. Give up. We're done. Simple problem. We're leaving. It's over. Okay, this one's going to be 50 ohms. This one is going to be 10 ohms. This one is going to be 20 ohms. And this one's going to be 10 ohms. Okay? So we have those in place. We know what the currents are. We have labeled the, the nodes. We can go ahead and draw all of our loops too. Uh, here, this inner loop will be loop one. This loop here is loop two, goes around this. This loop here will be loop three. The total source current is going to be loop one plus uh, current flowing through this circuit plus current flowing through that circuit plus current flowing through that circuit. Um, which also happens to be this one is the sum of all three of those two because each one of those currents flow through R1. Total current flowing through R2 is just current flowing through loop one. I don't even like looking at, I don't like the loop analysis. Nodes and voltages makes a lot more sense to me. If you want to figure out loops and currents, you can do that. There are book problems on it. I avoid, I avoid them like the plague. Um, it's, just, it's just not a fun way of learning to me. Voltages and nodes, that makes sense. Loops and currents is a little more confusing. Okay, so we have all this. Dylan said let's give up. Uh, I still have your attention for 15 minutes. Uh, I would pull up ground squirrel videos, but now I'm terrified. Uh, thank you, Sal. <laughs> uh, they're such cute little creatures. How can they be so vicious? 
Start forming little max. Pestilences. All right. Well, we can solve this very much the same way that we solved the last one. You could do node voltage analysis. You can do mesh current analysis. All of those are valid. I don't want to do any of those. Let's not do any of those, okay? Let's go ahead and go back and just these three are in parallel. We'll start by combining them, okay? Why not? So REQ1 uh, is equal to one divided by one over R2 plus one over R3 plus one over R4, uh, which is equal to one divided by one over 10 plus one over 20 plus one over 10. This is 0 0.1, one divided by 0 0.1 plus 0 0.05 0 0.1, which equals 1 over 0 0.25, which is equal to 4 ohms. How's that for head math, Sal? Huh? What now? Who is your instructor? Oh. I was going to say daddy, but that's, yeah. That would have been weird. That's why instructor was just a little bit better. I'm really glad Oh, dang it. <laughs> Remind me to shut off my mic pack. <laughs> like you're about to say something stupid. Shut the mic pack off. <laughs> oh, that was incredibly insensitive, but very true. <laughs> oh, oh, awful. I do this for a job. I get paid to do this. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, let's finish this problem. <laughs> so we've taken this, we've come up, we've come up with a, an equivalent resistance. Okay, so now what we have is uh, the equivalent resistances all work the same. It doesn't matter if this is a current generating source or a voltage generating source. Equivalent resistances always remain the same. So we have R1, REQ1, node 1, node 2, node 3. Node 3 is grounded. Okay, I am not going to simplify this circuit anymore. I, I could. I, it's fine if, if you want to. I don't want to because I don't need to. If you really wanted to go ahead and combine these two and be like, okay, R1 plus REQ1, it's 54 ohms, be my guest. You take 54 ohms, you multiply it by 0.2 amps, you get uh, 10.8 volts for a total system voltage. Awesome. You plug that into node one, you're in a great place. You can do that. That is perfectly valid. You can solve this however you want, so long as the physics principles that, that guide us, the, the conservation of mass, the conservation of energy, as long as those two are kept in place, as long as KVL and KCL are not violated, you can solve this however you want. And going through that way, it's perfectly valid. I'm not going to do that because I'm gonna step back and say, we already know everything we need to know. If I do KCL of this circuit, okay, at node one, IS is equal to IR1. At node two, IR1 is equal to IREQ1. At node three, IREQ1 is equal to IS. Simple maths. They're all equal to each other. We have exactly one path, which means all of our currents are gonna be equal. Everything is in series. Okay, with everything in series, I already know IS. It's 0.2 amps. All I have to do is just plug in IS, and then I already know R1. I already know REQ1. I already know my resistances. I know my currents. 
I have everything I need to solve the voltages. Okay? If you want to step back and solve the node one voltage first, that's fine. I don't want to because I can figure it out without having to take that additional step. So, VR1 is equal to IR1 times R1. It's equal to IR1 is 0 0.2 amps because the current in all of these components are equal times R1. R1 is 50, which means that VR1 is equal to 10 volts. Okay, REQ1. VREQ1 is equal to IREQ1 times REQ1. IREQ1, we have one current flowing through this, all of the currents are equal, which means that IREQ1 is equal to IS, which is equal to 0 0.2 amps. Multiplied by REQ1, which we came out to be 4 ohms, and that means that VREQ1 is equal to 0 0.8 volts, which is kind of small compared to a VR one, but it is what it is. Okay, now that I know this, VREQ1 is equal to the difference between node voltage 2 and node voltage 3. I can go ahead and write that represented by little v2 minus v little v3. Do I know what either little v2 or little v3 are? Three is zero. Little v3 is zero. So I know this number, I know this number, I don't know v2. I can rearrange this and say V2 is equal to 0 0.8 plus V3. What is V3? It's zero. So that means V2 is equal to 0 0.8 volts. And I can go ahead and write that in. Okay, I, by the way, I started with this one because you can do this one, but not knowing either V1 or V2 means you get stuck here and you have to solve this one first anyways. So that's why I started with the bottom one, uh, because I knew V3. Here, VR1 is the difference between node 1 and node 2. So it's equal to little v1 minus little v2. Do we know either v1 or v2? We just solved for v2. So we can rearrange this and say V1 is equal to 10 volts, or VR1, plus little v2, which little v2 equals 0 0.8, which means that little v1 is equal to 10.8 volts. We can go ahead and plug this in. Do we know what the source voltage is? It's 10.8 because Vs is equal to V1 minus V3. We now know both V1 and V3. V3 is zero, V1 is 10.8. That's what we solve for, okay? And a current source, a current source is very similar to a voltage source, but it does kind of flip everything back on its head. Instead of having to solve for voltages, here you're, you're end up spending a lot of your time solving for currents, and you're given currents, and that makes a, a lot more sense, and you just plug it in. The math is slightly different, but the procedure is identical. Okay. Uh, current source, it forces 0.2 amps, regardless of what the voltage is. If I were to, between three and this node over here, I create a four. Put in a new resistor. 
and call this one uh, R5 and have this also be equal to 50 ohms. Does the source voltage increase or decrease? Dylan says increase. You were on your game today, sir. Nice work. Why do you say increase? You have, yes, you have to keep the same current. The thing about a voltage DC source is the more resistors you add, the less current there is. The less current there is, the less voltage there is across each of your components. Adding a resistor here does not change the voltage of R1. It doesn't change the current through R1. It changes nothing. The rest of the circuit is not affected by adding a new resistor in series. If I were to add a resistor like this, and this is R5 equals 50 ohms. Does this change the voltage in R1? Yes, it does. In fact, this entire system is going to be affected by adding another resistor in parallel. In a current-driven source, adding resistors in parallel changes the behavior of the circuit. In a voltage-driven source, adding another resistor in parallel does nothing to the rest of the circuit. We have voltage-driven sources, which is why uh, they recommend putting components in parallel. If we had current-driven sources, we would actually have to put them in series. For this reason, the power consumption of the system increases by adding another resistor. Here, by adding it in parallel, this actually decreases the power consumption of the system because it, de it decreases the voltage across the source. Believe it or not, adding resistance decreases power output for a current source if it's in parallel, for a voltage source if it's in series. Voltage source, increased series resistance, increased power, decrease power. Current source, if you increase the parallel resistance, uh, you decrease power consumption. Okay, so fun little, fun little difference between these. We're gonna see stuff like this all semester where series and parallel are swapped. Capacitors and inductors are opposites in a very much similar way to how current sources and voltage sources differ. It's fun. Um, the math is all the same, but the behavior of the system is completely different. Just simply by taking this and switching it out, I can change the behavior substantially. Now, there is a way to make these systems identical. And this is my lead in. You should have all had this in your reading assignment due this week. That is the Norton and Tevinen equivalent circuits, okay? If all of my circuit is placed between two nodes, I can make this be equal, whoa, I gotta draw this right, to this. If everything is connected between these two nodes, I can make these two equal, and the behavior of those systems equal forever, no matter what is connected between these two nodes. I can add a resistor in parallel, doesn't change anything. I can add a resistor in series, changes nothing. That is the beauty of an equivalent circuit. We're gonna talk about equivalent circuits on Thursday though, so again, this is a preview for what we're talking about. Everything we're talking about so far has built into coming up with these equivalent circuits. Um, equivalent circuits are really important because everything is a power source. The whole reason why we're doing analog circuits with resistors, capacitors, and inductors is because we're trying to understand power. These are power control elements. 
Every one of these has a current that goes through it. Well, current times voltage is equal to power. You understand power through your components. You understand power consumption. You can talk about your power source. What is the source power needed to power it? What is the power you're getting out? What is the heat coming out of this one? What is the light coming out of this one? What is the, the rotational power coming out of that motor? It's all about power. All right, I'll see you on Thursday. Do your homework for tonight. It's due tonight. I'll give you new homework that's due next week. I will do it anyways. You don't tell me what to do.